Okay, so I have 15 minutes to do as many examples as I can using the fundamental theorem of calculus. All of the examples I'm going to do are from sections 6, 7, and 6, 8 on flippedmath.com. Okay, so I know the order was a little odd to me on the AP videos. So 6, 7 was very intuitive at finding an antiderivative. And then 6, 8 finally introduced. Let's get back to the pen. And then 6, 8 finally introduced the power rule for antiderivatives where we add one to the exponent, divide by the new, and then we can't forget to always include the plus C. This will be, unfortunately, where a lot of points are lost, but that plus C tells us that a family of functions exists and not just one answer. Okay. So I'll start with a definite integral, and a definite integral is when there's boundaries. So 3x squared minus 4 divided by x squared plus 1. So a lot like when we were learning the power rule for derivatives, it's so incredibly important to rewrite every integrand so that I can apply the power rule. So negative 1 to 2, 3x squared minus 4. This becomes x to the negative second power plus 1. Okay, once I start to find the antiderivative, I can get rid of the integrand. So I have 3x, add 1 to the new, divide by the new, minus 4x, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, divide by the new. And common mistake number 2, the antiderivative... Let me do this. The antiderivative of 1 dx is x, whereas the derivative of a constant is 0. So a lot of students integrate a constant to 0. So just something to be aware of. All right, now I'm going to evaluate that from negative 1 to 2. So now I can use my fundamental theorem. Okay, where I plug in my upper bound, my 3's cancel, so I get 2 cubed plus 4 divided by 2 plus 2 minus the answer I get when I plug in my lower bound. So negative 1 cubed plus 4 divided by negative 1 plus negative 1. And I should keep these in parentheses so you can see where the substitutions occur. Okay, you evaluate and find an answer for me. All right, so now if I'm given that g prime of x is the cosine of x and g of pi evaluates to 7, then find what g of 3 pi over 2 equals. Okay, so I'm given g prime, I'm given the derivative, and I'm asked to find something about the, the value of the function. So how do I do this? Well, I know that the antiderivative of g prime of x will give me g of x. Furthermore, and this is something that a lot of students ask about, so I'm going to replace g prime of x with cosine. Now, the fact that I'm given this information, it gives me what my boundaries are. So let's remind ourselves that the integral has to be written from lower boundary to larger boundary. So pi is my lower bound. 3 pi over 2 is my upper bound. And I know that this is equal to, by the fundamental theorem, g of 3 pi over 2 minus g of pi. So once I integrate the function, I know that I would, by the fundamental theorem, I plug in my upper bound, I subtract my lower bound. Okay, so g of 3 pi, 3 pi over 2, that's exactly what we're looking for. That's our unknown. g of pi is equal to 7. Now let me do a little bit of side work here. 
to evaluate this. Okay, so the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine. Why? Because the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. Okay, so I plug in my upper boundary of 3 pi over 2. Subtract the answer when I plug in pi. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0. So that evaluates to negative 1. The integral evaluates to negative 1. Now I'm just manipulating an equation for an unknown. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And the value of g of 3 pi over 2 is 6. This strategy and technique will become extremely important when we start looking at um, graphs and we have to determine what the value of the function is given the graph of the derivative. Okay, let h of x be the antiderivative. of x squared minus 2x if h of negative 3 equals 4 and what is h of 1 okay so h of x is the antiderivative of x squared minus 2x Okay, so I'm looking to find what the value of my function h is. The only way I can do that is by integrating the function x squared minus 2x. So if I set this up, I'm integrating x squared minus 2x. My boundaries come from my given information. So my smaller of the x values is negative 3. My larger is 1. By the fundamental theorem, because h is the antiderivative of this function, this would equal h of 1 minus h of negative 3. I'm looking for h of 1. So I would add h of negative 3 to both sides. h of negative 3 is given as 4, and I'm going to leave this for you to complete. Okay, so use the fundamental theorem, evaluate what this area is, and then find the answer for me. It is a fraction, so don't get discouraged. All right, now let's look at some indefinite integrals. So the antiderivative of 2x squared minus 3 over x plus 2 to the x dx. All right, so let me rewrite this using a power rule. And I liked on the one video when she put temptation. So I'm going to add 1 and divide by the new. Okay, uh-oh. And then I'm going to add 1 and divide by the new. And I can't forget my good old plus C. No, cannot divide by 0. No, the power rule only works when my exponent is any number except negative 1. So 2 to the x is now an exponential function. And they listed all of the integral rules, which it's really important that you have all of those in your notebook. Okay, so this was fine. My 2 thirds x cubed, that's just a straight application of the power rule. What's the antiderivative of 1 over x? That's the natural log of the absolute value of x. So this becomes minus 3 natural log of absolute value of x. And this one's a little tricky. It'll take some work, some getting used to. But just like any exponential function that has its der own derivative, 
The antiderivative of an exponential function is itself, but when the base is not a, we have to divide by the natural log of the base, m plus c. So it's got a lot going on, but it's important that you're understanding. It's just recognizing structure and applying the rules. Okay, so again, a lot like when we learn derivatives, you do not have an integral rule for when you're multiplying or dividing. So it's important that we make an algebraic step to get my integrand to be the sum or difference of terms. So I'm going to rewrite using exponents. Now I'm going to distribute that x to the 1 half, so that gives me x to the 3 halves minus x to the 3 fourths. Now it's just a straight application of the power rule. We are using fractions. I'm going to add 1 to the new. Dividing by a fraction is multiplying by its reciprocal. Add 1 to the exponent. Dividing by 7 fourths is the same as multiplying by 4 sevenths. And then I can't forget my plus C. The power rule is very easy. You may just have to do a little bit of work to get there. Eight X squared plus two X minus three all divided by X. <coughs> so same thing that I started example 5 with. I need to break this numerator up by taking each term and dividing it by the denominator. I can only use the power rule if I have it written, the term written as x raised to some number that isn't negative 1. So this gives me 8x plus 2 minus 3 over x. I'm not going to rewrite that as x to the negative 1 because the power rule does not apply. Yep. So add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. We want to say that this answer is 0, but I'm not deriving, I'm integrating. So what function has a derivative of 2? That would be 2x. 1 over x. The antiderivative is a natural log of the absolute value of x. And then we could certainly make this. And would I expect you to do that? I mean, probably, but we want to take points off. Okay. Antiderivative of 1 over x minus e to the x. 1 over x, straight application of the antiderivative of natural log. I shouldn't say that, not the antiderivative of natural log, the antiderivative when the exponent would be negative 1, if we were to rewrite it as a power rule. We love e to the x, and we love e to the x because it's its own derivative and integral. And then just plus c. All right, last example. Antiderivative of 1 over x times the square root of x. So two steps before I can actually integrate it using the power rule. I am going to multiply like bases by adding the exponents together. So 1 plus a half. And then I need to write it with a negative exponent because only when it's in this form of x to the n power can I apply the power rule. And now I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. So negative 3 halves plus 1 would give me negative 1 half. Dividing by negative half is the same as multiplying by negative 2. Then I remember my good old plus C. Now you could also write the answer like that with a positive exponent using radicals, but just make sure you're following whatever the directions say. All right, eight examples is all I could do. Have a good day.